Today I'm going to be talking about spinning. It's basically a concept that has to do with PR companies and when they take a certain situation that happens with their client and spin it to make that client look better. everyone and welcome to Spot the Spin with Priscilla. Today I'm going to be talking about the tragic situation that happened last summer in August of Music Nightclub's official OVO after party. On August 4th, Music Nightclub hosted a party to celebrate OVO Fest, which is Toronto rapper Drake's music festival that he puts on where he brings out a bunch of different acts and everyone has a good old time. What happened was two people were fatally shot to death and killed, and three people were injured. The victims of these families suffered a terrible loss that day. The official OVO after party gave the assumption that rapper Drake and his OVO crew were going to be there because it was called the Music Nightclub official OVO after party. 4,000 guests showed up, but to see that there was no Drake, the lives lost were Duval Hibbert of Brampton, he was only 23 years old, and Ariel Navarez Finoy of Toronto, who was 26 years old. My sister Ariela was a beautiful girl inside and out that would do anything for her family and friends. She was a free spirit and lived life to the fullest. After the shooting happened, a lot of the media and the public gave Drake flack for not responding to what happened because they essentially thought that it was his responsibility to take actions for this after party because it was under his organization's name. It took Drake about seven days to respond to the message and he gave out a pretty lengthy statement about how he felt about the shootings. His statement stated that he was plagued and pained by the violence that continued to escalate in his city and that he was in a moral blind. He also offered condolences to the families who had lives lost in the shooting and that we need to stop this morbid of gun violence that's happening in Toronto because we're such a small community. His statement was generally targeted to his fans, the public, and the victims' families who suffered a great loss, and also the 4,000 people who went. The communication strategy that Drake used to convey his message was on his personal blog, October's very own .blogspot.com. The statement was, was written pretty eloquently and stayed very true to his brand and his personality. I went to the SLC, the Student Learning Center here at Ryerson University, and asked a couple of people what they thought about Drake's statement. Here. Thanks, Priscilla. So today I asked students from the Ryerson community about the situation and what they thought of Drake's statement. Here's how it went. I am plagued and pained by the violence that continues to escalate in our city. No one will hate him after this. No one will be upset, you know? So it's just like, thanks, Drake. When's Peace 26 coming out? When you think of Toronto, like, it's become to the point where you think of Drake. He kind of, like, had to apologize. I feel like it was totally written, though. Like, it's, I don't know if he wrote it or his PR team wrote it for him, but it was beautifully written. I'm the reason to believe he did it. But, like, it was needed. Like, people died at his event, right? I don't necessarily think it was sincere. I think he handled it fairly well. Because you could always go to, like, an advisor or a council and be like a puppet, but Drake actually came out and decided to be an actual human being and actually tell you guys how he felt about the whole thing. It's kind of like, just to say he said sorry, not to actually like be sorry. He really looked at the individual people and how they felt. So. I mean, cool, maybe it doesn't bring back those people, but it did not. Overall, it looks like we got a lot of mixed reviews about Drake's statement. Back to you, Priscilla. People thought that Drake did write the material and that he is a really genuine guy who would go out and say that about his city because that's why he is who he is. And people obviously thought, no, it was his PR team that wrote it just to make him look better. I believe that the subtext of his statement was to remove the idea that Drake had anything to do with the fact that people were shot fatally. It was a form of public outcry and to give the public an answer to the questions that they were asking him. I believe that Drake and his party made this statement to just reassure the people of Toronto that he is not one to be for gun violence or to be involved in any kind of way 
and he if anything he wants to stop gun violence and encourage the young people of Toronto and the people that listen to his music to do that. Drake's PR people definitely use the third phase of PR, the mutual satisfaction phase. The idea that where you understand the public and you use what you understood from them and manipulate that. This is how they did it. By knowing that everyone knows him as this soft rapper, this guy who's really in his emotions and his feelings, so therefore that was executed in his statement. In his statement, he talked about the greater good of Toronto, stopping gun violence, and just being there for one another. And everyone knew that if Drake said that, it would bring Toronto together. I feel like the best phase that Drake should have used to better his image was the explanatory phase. Because within that phase, that's when you're actually informing the public. And one question that really goes unanswered is, why was there an official OVO after party, but Drake wasn't there? See, I feel like the only reason that so many people went to this after party was because they had the inclination in their head, oh, Drake is gonna be there, let me go to this after party. And then something bad happened. But in the end, Drake wasn't even there. So I feel like Drake should really explain as to why he wasn't even at his own people's official after party. And maybe that's something that would help the victims, families come to terms more with what happened to their loved ones. That'd be no damn sense. Yeah, I get that. Oh. We got a lot of mixed reviews from that one. I can say that on yeah. camera. And I just did, but like I didn't say it to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's it.